Well, good morning and welcome to our Lent series, Journeying with Jesus. We are looking at Jesus' journey to the cross as recorded in Luke's Gospel. Before we look at the passage for today, let's commit our time to the Lord in prayer. Father, thank you for your word. And we pray that as we consider these verses this morning, you will speak to us so that through your spirit, we will walk closer to Jesus and become more like him. We ask this in his name. Amen. Well, today we're looking at Luke 20 and verses 20 to 26, paying taxes to Caesar. Keeping a close watch on him, they, and that was the teachers of the law and the chief priests, sent spies who pretended to be sincere. They hoped to catch Jesus in something he said so they might hand him over to the power and authority of the governor. So the spies questioned him, Teacher, we know that you speak and teach what is right and that you do not show partiality, but teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. Is it right for us to pay taxes to Caesar or not? He saw through their duplicity and said to them, Show me a denarius, whose image and inscription are on it. Caesar's, they replied. He said to them, then give back to Caesar what is Caesar's and to God what is God's. They were unable to trap him in what he had said there in public and astonished by his answer, they became silent. Yesterday, we were looking at the parable of the wicked tenants and in verse 19, we were told that the teachers of the law and the chief priests realised that the parable was spoken against them. They were the wicked tenants. They were hopping mad about this and looked for a way to arrest Jesus, but didn't do it because they were afraid of the people. So now the religious leaders take a more subtle approach and send spies pretending to be honest and sincere men, hoping they could catch Jesus off guard and say something that could get him arrested. They were very clever and flattered Jesus before asking him the trick question. We see in verse 21, they said, Teacher, we know that you speak and teach what is right, and that you do not show partiality, but teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. Flattery indeed. But Jesus knew what they were trying to do and stayed out of their trap. We need to beware of flattery, insincere or excessive praise given by others for ulterior motives. With God's help, You can detect it and avoid the trap that often follows. Then came the loaded question in verse 22. Is it right for us to pay taxes to Caesar or not? The Jews were enraged at having to pay taxes to Rome, by which they were supporting the occupying power and their pagan gods. They hated the system that allowed tax collectors to charge exorbitant rates and keep the extra for themselves. If Jesus said they should pay taxes, they would call him a traitor to the Jewish nation and their religion. But if he said they should not pay taxes, they could report him to Rome as a traitor and a rebel. Jesus' questioners thought they had him this time, but Jesus outwitted them again. 
In verse 24, Jesus called for a Roman coin, a denarius. That was a usual pay for a day. Whose image and inscription is on the coin, he asked. It's Caesar's, they replied. Jesus responded in verse 25, Then give back to Caesar what is Caesar's, and to God what is God's. As God's followers, we have legitimate obligations to both God and the government. We are citizens of heaven and earth at the same time. We must not compartmentalise our lives between secular and sacred. God is in all areas of our lives and our faith should spill over so that it's not just for Sundays, but every day of the week and every situation and person we come across. The state must be respected and its directions complied with in the sphere that God allots to it. The state rightly collects taxes, whether we like it or not, to discharge its functions from which we all benefit. But it's important to keep our priorities straight. When the two authorities conflict, our duty to God must always come before our duty to the state. But how do we give to God what is God's? We should give to God that which bears his image and likeness, namely ourselves. Romans 12 verse 1 says, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. God wants us to offer ourselves as living sacrifices, daily laying aside our own desires to follow him, putting our, all our energies and resources at his disposal and trusting him to guide us. We do this out of gratitude that our sins have been forgiven. As we think in this period of Lent about the sacrifice that Jesus made for us in going to the cross, may we recommit ourselves to him as living sacrifices that will bring him praise and glory. Let's pray. You laid aside your majesty, gave up everything for me, suffered at the hands of those you had created. You took all my guilt and shame when you died and rose again, now today, you reign in heaven and earth, exalted. I really want to worship you, my Lord. You have won my heart and I am yours forever and ever. I will love you. You are the only one who died for me gave your life to set me free. So I lift my voice to you in adoration. Amen. Thank you for being with us this morning. Do join us again for the next instalment of Journeying with Jesus. Mm -hmm.